Hey, hey bud. What's going on? <sighs> hey, Iconic. Man. <laughs> I guess beards are kind of kind of in in these days and age. <laughs> with everything that's going on. I mean, barbers are shut down and everything, so I might as well... Uh, Grow this out for a little. Yeah, the uh, the the, sh the shutdown could not have uh, happened at a worse time for me because I was about due to get a little bit on the sides taken down, get the top cleaned up a little bit, and it's going to be pretty rough for a couple a uh, couple of weeks probably. I think I think you have until well, I know here you have until eight o'clock um, to to kind of get in your your last cuts, um, ladies, <laughs> get your last um, nail polish and. Um, and fingers and mani pedis done before everything kind of shuts down. But uh, man, wow! I, I feel so like we're doing this video, and it's a, and we're like in a completely new universe. We are in a new. It's it's been a weird it's couple of weeks. Time. It's it's been definitely been a very strange uh, couple of weeks. Th things seem to have progressed fast, mm -hmm. which is pro well, I mean, progressed fast in terms of like the response to everything, which is probably a good thing mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Um, but it still just kind of feels weird to watch the speed at which things have uh have kind, kind of, of unfolded. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's. I remember in the last video, you basically said, "By the time we have another one of these things, you doubt anything will really have changed." Yeah. Well. <laughs> Dad, talk about the foreshadowing. <laughs> it's. I have I have been wrong before, so, <laughs> and I will be again. Oh man! But um, other than that, how are you doing, man? I, I'm doing, I, I'm doing good, man. Working home, uh, sorry, work and home. I'm not working from home yet. Mm -hmm. Might be at some point here. Hey, um, Ryan. but uh, but yeah, just uh, it's just uh, that that's been my life um, pretty much. My wife's also still having to go to work. The in-laws are getting the getting the kid because of course schools are closed right now. So uh, yeah, just been uh, doing a whole lot of whole lot of chilling. Yeah. Right now, a whole lot of chilling right now. Same here, same here. Um, it's weird, and it's normally when we would do our videos, we would sit down and we would kind of map out what we wanted to talk about. But we really didn't get a chance to do that. This now time. we're going completely off the cuff today. So. Off the cuff. Um, yep. And the first thing that that comes to my mind is, I feel a little dirty right now. And I'll, <laughs> I'll explain to you why. Um, and I, I know it's probably something a lot of people out there are probably feeling also. Um, so with these, well, the first thing would really be with everything going on in the economy. I mean, watches are kind of the last thing on a lot of people's minds. Buying a watch, purchasing a watch, the last thing on a lot of people's minds. However, this has kind of led to a situation where you have a... <laughs> funny Rob funny um, it's led to a situation where you have a lot of well many ADs couple ADs um, who are kind of going through a rough situation uh, they're literally on the brink in terms of trying to sell watches um, I know some brands don't let that happen and I know I've, I've known some ADs where where when things have gotten hard, brands have literally come in and just said, okay, give us all our watches back. Mm. Um, fend for yourself. And I know there are a couple of ADs out there who are kind of selling watches at a really discounted price. Um, in many ways, they're doing it so they could keep their doors open uh, because it's a tough time. And I find myself in a conundrum. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the deal guy in me is just is just looking for an opportunity to pick up something that I would normally like be looking for simply because I know a deal is going to be there. Mm -hmm. The the humanity side of me feels dirty for even thinking about that. <laughs> if you understand what I, like it, it it's it's a conundrum because I can't help it. It's it's part of my DNA. If a watch is going to be yeah, if a watch is going to be there at a discounted price that that bargain that consumer in me is like okay this is a great opportunity but at the same time i feel dirty for thinking that i'm kind of benefiting not where not in situations where i would just shake my finger and be like okay you're already charging too much for something mm -hmm. but more in the situation where in many ways 
for a lot of companies, this is just their way of trying to stay alive. Right. And um, especially I, when you think, one more thing, especially when you think we're on kind of like the left-hand side of the curve when it comes to mm -hmm. this thing. I, st I don't think we've reached the peak of this. I think we're still maybe a few days, maybe even a week or two away from the peak before we can even see the other side of the hill and coming down. So it, it, it's it's this conundrum, I feel. It, 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 it sucks. Like, I'm literally on Watch You Seek and I see these deals and I'm just like, <sighs> like it right. makes me pause. But what were you going to say? Well, I was, I was going to say, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to... Like, so I, I'm not feeling that. For me, it's kind of just business as usual where I'm just kind of looking at micros right now. <laughs> I'm probably going to buy a watch today because uh, cause I'm, you know, I can't be stopped. Um, <laughs> see, now, now the, at least the good news for most ADs, though, um, is hopefully if, if you know, the, the U.S. government can pass some, some, you know, economic safeguards in place um, that – those, you know, watch ADs are small, smaller businesses. They, they're they not going to qualify, you know, as, you know, big, you know, businesses with more than 500 employees, except for like your Tornos and, mm -hmm. you know, like the official like Omega stores and stuff like that. Even then, I'm not even sure um, how that kind of sits out. But there, there's going to be relief for those businesses, hopefully, um, at the end of the day. Uh, it's It still sucks on the ground level. Mm -hmm. um, my My former employer, GameStop, has been in the news quite a bit lately. Um, cause of some shade, not shady, but just some very un, uncaring stuff that they've been doing, um, mm. in, in the wake of this. And it turns out that getting out of that industry, uh, could not have been better time for me. It's weird when you say that, cause I actually thought I, for you, I thought the other way. I thought like if there was ever a time GameStop oh, no. would be making a lot of money would be in the situation where a lot of people have to stay home. Well, it's and not that they're not. It's just that they're they're treating their employees like, you know, your typical corporate owned. You know, hey, we got to get it, squeeze every dollar out of the situation that we can, and kind of looking less at the human side of it. Now that's that eased up as of today a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but meanwhile, the company that I work for now is, hey, we just gave you two free days of PTO added for everybody instantly right away. Um, if you get COVID nineteen, you get two weeks paid leave. We don't want you at work <laughs> while that's going on. You know, liberal leave right now. All this, all this stuff that they're able to do, um, and and they're hurting as well. Um, you know, you know, we're our business has definitely slowed down a little bit in the wake of what's going on because of the things that my current company sells. Um, but as far as like watch ADs and stuff like that, these tend to be smaller businesses, and like you said, they're scratching for every dollar that they can. I hope that there's a little bit of relief uh, at on the other side of the tunnel for them. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, like I said, feet's being dragged and, and, you know, the government's dragging their feet a little bit. I don't think that if you want to get a good deal on a watch right now that you should necessarily feel guilty mm -hmm. about it. Like, I understand because you're not this completely hard, cynical person that you have, you know, you're, you're going to feel some kind of way about it. And I understand. But at the same time, if you are buying a watch, even if it's at an insanely discounted price, you're still helping that company. Um, in a time where they are probably struggling for business right now, I'd imagine that the average person uh, in this country is not really looking to purchase uh, luxury goods at the moment. Yeah. Um, you and I are very fortunate in that we are still able to work and collect a paycheck during this time right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have to change up our, our daily you know, flow too much, aside from the fact that you're working from home and mm -hmm. you know, probably not socializing you know, outside with other folks as much. Um, so again, I don't think you need to feel guilty about that. Um, but I also don't think you need to feel obligated either. Like, I think you can just kind of, kind of do what you do, help where you can. Um, you know, I know for me, like if we end up getting a personal stimulus of some kind from the government, like I'm probably going to donate a fair amount of that to help people that are a little bit more in need since I'm not in that situation. And I think just, you know, being a good citizen is really all you can ask for, yeah. um, at this time. With, with stuff like this going on. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like the difference between seeing a discount and jumping on it and seeing a discount and seeing how much more blood you could squeeze out of the stone. Right. I think, I think that's kind of where we are. That's the separation line between, you know what, you're just a normal consumer, you see an opportunity, mm -hmm. or you're kind of like a heartless ass 
and you're just going to see just how much you can squeeze. Spanish makes a good point. He says um, some brands don't have as much margin and don't have room to discount. Some grow on greed, and I have a lot more so. If there is room, it's okay to be an educated consumer and only buy when it's right. Um, I think he's, he's, he's absolutely right. It's, it's, if, I mean, if there was ever something that you really had your eyes on right now, I mean, it, it, this might be a good time for you to just, you know, see, see what's out there. But the other part of that that's kind of interesting is you're kind of seeing exactly where some of the margins are in mm -hmm. terms of watches. Like if, if, if of course, most places, they're going to want to to still make a little bit off of the sale. It's why in many instances, when you see companies go out of business, they don't immediately just drop it down to like, oh, 75% off. They start slow. 10% here, 20% there. And then sometimes you see more than that. And sometimes you just see them shut down. Somebody buys everything and sells it after the fact. But it's interesting. Like you're seeing some of these margins come in. And it, it, it's as a consumer, it's interesting to see where, where some of these companies are willing to go. Um, but yeah, Rob also says, you know, this is a great time for micro brands. And it, I think in many ways he's right. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I think, and this is just one small piece of advice for micro brands right now, consumers need a, a, need a lot of confidence in their purchases right now. I mean, I, by, for the most part, most micro brand consumers kind of know where your production is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, and in the rare instance, it's coming from, uh, from other places. But for the most part, we know where it's coming from. So when you see something new uh, kind of being put out there, I think it's, it's good for you to kind of instill some more confidence in your customer. Let them know, you know what, or at least tell them the truth. I know, here's a new model. We're working on it. Um, but just know it's probably going to take six months before you mm -hmm. see it. Um, normally, we'd be on a, on a three-month timeline. But with the current situation, it's going to take six months. And it might even take longer. Mm -hmm. Yes, that might decrease on your your sales, and you might have a lot of people just not decide not to purchase it. But at least it, it's that's better than after the fact people are expecting watches and then they don't see watches. Like this would be the worst time to promise to promise small, like promise big and deliver small. This is the worst time. For under you. under under promise and over deliver is a phrase that makes makes its way around my my workplace quite a bit. And I think that's a good philosophy, especially for people that have smaller businesses right now. And, and to be fair, from what I've seen, um, I know Trask has been out there because their fulfillment on, I think the summit is going to be a little bit behind right now. And there's some other micro brands that have had the supply chain slow down because of what's been going on. Um, and, and I've seen them be very upfront about that. And again, there's no such thing um, as too much information when it comes to consumers. And again, I'm not only speaking as, someone who's bought from a lot of micro brands i'm someone who's backed a lot of kickstarters um in other industries like board games and stuff like that mm -hmm. and there are companies that have been you know very transparent about the process and those tend to get those are the companies that tend to be cut a lot of slack and and that tend to be um you know well thought of and then there's ones that are you know very coy uh they play things close to the vest and those companies tend to get uh, a lot of scrutiny and, and Jonathan from Bruce says, uh, you know, transparency and delivery times are important. And you have to be, especially if, if you did crown fund and watch and backers were expecting it like around this time um, and things are obviously delayed because of, of the situation that's going on around the world right now. Just be upfront and honest with them. People will understand. Um, there might be, you know, one or two or three folks that might be, uh, you know, irate despite, <laughs> despite all that and demand your money back. And you know yeah. what? Give them the money back and keep and keep it rolling. You know what I mean? Like you'll sell that watch at some point, I'm sure. So exactly. As always, we forgot to do the first thing that we should normally do. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you, what are you wearing, my friend? So I'm wearing uh, the EMG Nemo, possibly for one of the last times. I think this one's on the the cut block right now. Mm. Um, as far as as far as some stuff that I may uh, that I may be cutting here soon. Dude, I told you, I told you online, um, the Grand Seiko is, uh, is actually within sight. 
now, um, which is very exciting for me. Indeed, uh, be- indeed, nice. Well, like I said, I'm call- calling some board games, and we're gonna, and then there's some money coming in from that, and there's a couple watches that I'm ready to get cut out. I'm I'm buying into the ten watches at the end of the year uh, <laughs> goal, so man, we're gonna see what man. happens. But like I said, I have one that I that I think I'm gonna purchase later today as well. So again, man, if, if that's coming in, we gotta have a couple going out. So yeah, it, it's. I- it's been this whole year I haven't purchased a watch yet and it, it's it's very surprising to me I'm surprised I've lasted this long um yeah I've not look, I've not abstained no, yeah. so. I've looked at a couple but nothing has really grabbed my attention but before I forget I'm actually I'm I'm rocking what in many ways I would consider the appropriate watch for this day and age um this is the uh black bay steel um I picked this up. I haven't worn this watch in quite some time. And I realized just how scratched up to hell the watch <laughs> is. And I love it. Like, when I mean, guys, those of you who have black bays and you know they have that polished side, imagine that polished side and it almost doesn't look polished anymore. That's how scratched up this watch is. And I love it for that. Like, you know what's funny is that I we this is I mean I, if if we're counting this as an official episode of the podcast which I guess we're gonna post it later yeah. uh, in video as well so it's episode ten I think that's the first time that you've ever worn what is kind of like your main watch in your collection on the show which is weird so I know it's it, it is weird because if I feel like on every episode I keep on going back to something new that I have in mm-hmm. that's that I I have on loan and. Like this on the bracelet, like it, it, it. Oh my gosh! It, it reminds me of why I love this watch so much, and why I was so hungry to get this watch. Like I, I that and the fact that I don't know if you, you from you're familiar with the show on um on Amazon Prime called Bosch. Mm-hmm. Um, he wears a sub, um, and it's the only watch he wears. Like on a bracelet all the time. And I'm binge watching it, as I know a lot of people are binge watching right now. And I saw him wearing it and I was just like, damn, I miss my black bay. And I beat it. <laughs> I took it out and I just I put it on, tossed it back on the bracelet. I mean the 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 um the band tool, the tool the back of this is scratched up to hell. Mm-hmm where I keep on putting in the bracelet simply because getting in the the spring bar on this is kind of difficult. So it's scratched up to hell. Oh, you're telling me I'm so like, I'm, I'm probably gonna like we talked offline about this, I'm probably gonna sell um, the ECA here soon at some point just because mm-hmm. it's been like, like, like I said, I don't grab it that much because of the issue of the crown. Um, talk about a watch that's hard to change out the bracelet on. Um, I'm trying so hard not to, not to, not to, to scratch the lines because I'm trying to keep it as pristine as possible. Um, so I, I, I feel your pain. Oh, and and, right. and Random Rob chimes and says, it's kind of nice having a watch that is no worry uh, that you can just use and enjoy. That's where I'm at with a couple of my permanent mainstays um, as well. My Hamilton uh, looks halfway beat to hell so far. Uh, my Monta SkyQuest is definitely picking up some some love, let's say. Uh, on top of it. Um, if I do end up making the first this week, I'm not going to tell you what it is, um, but you'll laugh <laughs> when you see it uh, if I do get it in. so Of course. Um, Craig, you know what? Um, we'll give you a pass. Casio's will not count towards your watch total. So. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't count these in my – as part of my 10. These are just things that I have because yeah. they're fun and, you know, it is what it is. So, But definitely, I mean, I, I, what Rob says is so true. Once you get past that point on a watch where it's scratched up to hell and you, you know you're never going to sell it, especially when you're just a flipper, it, it, it's so it's like a, just a comforting feeling just comes over you. Just like, huh. Like, I know I could wear this and I just don't, I just don't care. And it's funny, I could, I could pinpoint exactly when that was. Um, there was a Divers Watch Club meetup um, not last year's wind up. It was the wind up before last year. So wind up 2018. Um, they had a divers watch um, watch club meet up in the city, 
and they had a a um a strap change contest. So you start on the bracelet and you have to put in a specific NATO. And so I'm sitting here, I'm at a table with eight guys, and I pull out the, the black face steel. All of them look over at me like, are you crazy? Are you really <laughs> about to do a contest where you're probably gonna where you're gonna be rushing to change a strap on a two thousand plus dollar watch? And I looked at them and I'm like, of course I am. Like that's that this is my watch. I'm never selling this. I don't care if it gets scratched up. In fact, the more scratches it has, the more I feel just joined at the hip with it. Mm -hmm. Like for every scratch, I know I'm never gonna sell. It's like a re reaffirmation that I'm never gonna sell this watch. Mm -hmm. So here I am and, and all of them I think that's probably why I ended up winning. I think some of them were looking at me when they were supposed to be changing <laughs> their straps. And I just went ahead and mind you, I scratched it like four or five times when I was doing this. And I just didn't care. It was just like, and it's not even like I'm trying to act like money isn't a thing. I mean, it cost a lot of money for me to get this watch. But it's just, I got to that point where I knew I was never going to sell the watch. And that's yeah. such a reaffirming and, and, and just... It's a it's a beautiful feeling when you really like a watch and you know you're never gonna sell it, and you just beat it up to hell and it's just like, yeah. I'm, well, like, like you said, it's yours, and and I know that like if I first get a new watch in, um, I usually do kind of baby them a little bit just because like in the back of my mind, while it is my watch, I also am kind of like caretaking it in in in, the, in in case I do sell it, like just in case something else. So like. Like you said, it is refreshing when you have at least a couple watches um, that you know aren't leaving the collection ever uh, that you can just wear and not have to not have to sweat it. And you know, if it does pick up a scratch, now I will admit there's some still on the Sky Quest that that kind of bug me. Like I had this like one big long scratch in the side of the case Ooh. for some reason. Um, and, and again, it, it's it's only because it's the only one that's there. Maybe once I scratch the side of the case up more, it won't bother me as much. Right. But right now, it's like the only big one that's there, so like it's a little unsightly at the moment. Um, but like my notice Avalon, like I ha on the on the outside of the bezel, mm -hmm. and, and and the on the top of the bezel, there's a very thin uh, metal on the outer edge. Like that looks scuffed to hell because I accidentally scraped it on the bottom uh, of a concrete pool of an in ground pool, and I'm just like like it it bothered me a little bit at first, but now I just it doesn't really matter because I don't plan on parting ways with that watch at any point. So <laughs> we have a guest. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's my poor boy. My wife is uh, taking care of him. Um, we've kind of kept him indoors a lot. So mm -hmm. because of the times um, it's interesting, you mentioned Manta and one thing that I, I, I have to say I really enjoyed um, recently is all the live videos like mm -hmm. the smaller brands are doing, like Manta Brew, Oak and Oscar. Um, you have podcasters, 10 and 2. Um, like it, it's, it's so nice to see. I mean, micro brands already had a close connection with their customers. Mm -hmm. But like this just reiterates that fact. And it, it's so nice to see these brands. And it, it's cool. We had talked about this before, and then where I was just saying, what can my, what can a brand do if it's gonna go out there and kind of go on social media? And this was a clear case of what is a perfect thing to do. I mean, I watched the Monta videos maybe a handful of times. He mentions, you know, oh, this is available or this watch is available, but most of the video was you know, talking about experiences. Um, the, you know, different techniques, different things that they do. And it was, it was refreshing. It, it didn't mm -hmm. feel like an advertisement. It felt like, like just a cool conversation between micro brand owners and some of the stuff they have to deal with. And some of the worries that they have also in this day and age. I, I mean, I, I know some brands are doing better than others, but I, I fully expect that right now is not a great time for them. Mm -hmm. And and again, that's it, we've talked about this on the show before, and and you alluded to it. It's an advantage that micro brands have um, that larger brands don't have. And not saying that everybody should do it, because you know there 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 is a certain amount of you know genuinity, I guess you could say, that you want out of that process. If you look like you're just doing it 
cynically just to you know drive clicks uh, it doesn't really doesn't really have the effect mm -hmm. um but it's one of the things that you know that i do appreciate and, and why i'm more inclined to deal with smaller brands and micro brands because you have a little bit more of that personal kind of connection to the brand or at least you feel like you do um just because it's a little bit more grassroots it's a little bit more community oriented you're not just buying a product from this you know monolithic company that sits on the hill like it's you're but you're buying it from someone that you know that you chat with that you talk to um like i know monta goes out of their way whenever you post pictures of their watches on instagram and stuff like that they usually drop you a comment that kind of thing and you know that it, it it doesn't matter but it does matter you know yeah. what i mean like it's 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 cool to kind of have that to kind of have that um that connection to the brand as well so okay. So, so I, I can't really think of anything else. Is there anything you wanted to kind of talk about? Like some of the things you're seeing, um, kind of experiencing? I mean, it's, it's been all quiet. Like I said, it's the reason that we didn't really get together to hammer out like topics to talk about on the show is because the watch industry, there's not been a ton of news. Um, it, it's, it's been interesting to see how different brands have had to react to it. I know um, like Notice, for example, had a watch that they were, planning on selling as a special edition at wind up San Francisco, which of course got canceled because of everything going on. Um, so they had, so they dropped it early, um, which I'm sure there were quite a few people uh, that were happy about. So that's like the only like new watch that I've seen really, um, at least lately. And also the worn and wound uh, Baltic uh, oh, collaboration. Okay. How did, okay. I'll ask you about the Baltic film first. How did uh -huh. you feel about that watch? Like I, I mean, personally, I, I loved it, but what were your thoughts? So, you know me. I'm a big, like I said, I, 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 like, I like value. Value is good to me. Um, when, I, when I'm microbrand shopping and things like that. Mm -hmm. there, it, this is irrational. I'm, I'm prefacing the fact it's irrational. For some reason, mm -hmm. whenever I see a watch that has an 800 series Miota movement inside of it. Uh, it irks uh, me. It irks me to no end because I remember when I saw, you know, I, I was expecting a little bit of a higher price point because of the collab stop. and stuff like that. <laughs> and a little bit. In, in, that, in that sense, I am. Just because there's a better option that's right there. That's not, again, I, I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I know the, you know, economies of scale for micro brand watch companies and, and Chris can, Chris Bale can come chastise me after the fact. Um, but, Miyota, Miyota 90, or the Miyota 9 series is not like, at, at least as far as I know, not hard movements to attain and not incredibly pricey movements to attain. Tell me if I'm wrong. But like I said, I, I'd, I'd much rather have the movement that's more fully featured and that's a little bit more accurate. And, he, and, you, can, and you can chart, like, you can pass that premium on to me as a customer. That's fine. But I, I, and, and guys, you correct me if I'm wrong. The 821A has. Pardon? The 821A that they put in the three-hander at least has. Are you sure about that? Because I'm pretty sure that when I was looking I, at I, the LACO, like the entry-level LACOs, like the, um, the pilot like series. Those, those have the 821, 8, um, 821 in them. Okay. But I think Myota created a new series. It, it, it's what was in the Boulevard hack watch that I, ha that I had. I'm I'm googling it on Caliber Corner, yeah. Right now. Okay, so the 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 old so apparently there's two versions of the 821A. The older ones don't hack. Mm -hmm. The newer ones do hack. Yes, and I think okay. Um, I like the watch. I I, I kind of have to do the separate the movement from the watch thing, and mm -hmm. then calculate in my mind overall. Then as a picture, what is it? I think overall as a picture, I think it, it it's a beautiful watch. Um, I love the drill lug holes, love the dial. That's cool. It's not something I would particularly buy. Oh, no. My, 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 so my wife um, bought, uh, well, I, actually, I bought for her um, the Salmon Dial Notice Retrospect uh, that I got from, uh, from, the, from Watch Clicker, who sold his. So thank you, Will, for, uh, for selling me that, which she adores. Um, but she's like, oh, do you want to try it out? And so, like, I just held the, the dial to my skin. So I'm a pretty white dude. Um, <laughs> my skin definitely has a more pinkish hue than a more tan hue. 
You and lost it holding in the, in the yeah, background. Say, hold, holding the watch up to my skin. I was like, all right, so salmon and Dial watches are never something that I'm going to be able to wear ever because it just blended in. Oh my! I, I I think for me it would be a little bit different. I think I think it, it might look end up looking a little, a little. It would look better. I think for me it would look better. But I don't know. It's it's it still didn't really speak to me. Though I, mm. I liked it. I truly appreciate it. I, I think it was great. Um, the chronograph was nice. And I know, it's funny, I know you're saying everything about the Myota movement, but then I know for sure some of the some of the movements now we're looking at that ST-19 and they're, they're like, yeah. oh my God, no. No. One good thing is it's from from what I read, it seems like all the movements were kind of regulated and checked in France. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping in their Q, in their QC, they were able to to weed out all the bad examples and just mm -hmm. provide great. Plus, it's only a run of one. I think one, a run of one hundred. It was a hundred of each. Yeah, I think yeah. so. So chances are it's not as high a number where you would see a lot of um, a lot of uh, high failure rate. Um, so who knows? Maybe they went through one hundred and twenty five took out 25 that they realized were poor and just gave us the best 100. Um, we, uh, we, we have a mutual friend, and I'm not going to say who, who talks so much trash on those STP uh, <laughs> 919 movements that I'm, I'm so afraid to touch one <laughs> ever. It, 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 you, believe me, if you're, if you're an inside of a watch guy, at some point in time, you've probably walked into somebody who said, those movements are trash, they're terrible, you never know where you're getting them from, which is the number one thing with those movements. The base movement is a good movement, but you just don't know where the movement is being manufactured and what, mm. and just how much QC went into the movement. So if you have 100, depending on where you brought it from, like you could get 100 perfect examples. You could get 70 perfect examples and 30 terrible examples. You could mm. get some versions that were oiled, some versions that were not oiled. You could literally, you're running the gamut, depending on where you bought the, the, that movement from, where it could run under any of those situations. Um, I'm trying to think what else. It's, 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 because it's, you're right, it's such a weird time. I've, actually, no, before we move on, the, um, what do you think about the notice? I actually like the notice also. So it's funny. Um, I opened up the site. Friday was really slow at work. I opened up the site at 11. Mm -hmm. um and sat there and in, in the lead up the pictures that they showed made the case look almost like a gunmetal color which mm -hmm. i thought was really badass mm -hmm. and then when i went to the website to look at the pictures it looked much more black so i commented on the instagram post and i asked wes i was like is it black or is it gunmetal and he's like oh no it's just the light playing tricks it's definitely black and i didn't buy it because i don't like bl blacked out watches are not my are not my thing. Oh wow! Not a big thing. I would have actually preferred if it was gunmetal, personally. Yeah. But I, they only made forty. I'm sure they sold them all at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're definitely sold out. Yeah. So I liked it. Um, love the orange minute hand. Um, love the fact that some of the proceeds were going to, to um. We're going to fight the 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 coronavirus situation. So I did like that. Uh, interesting comment from Paul. I don't know if you checked it out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, Skunk Works. It definitely sold out in like an hour. Um, yep. it, Paul is asking what we think about that green Zodiac Kiwi from uh, Paige and Cooper. Mm -hmm. I posted it on the Watch um, Watch With Us channel. Um, I I don't know. It, it's it's a lot of green for me. <laughs> a lot of green, <laughs> and not even like it's a lot of green in different shades. It's a, it's a, it's very different shades of green. Very different shades of green. You know, you know what though? I'm, I'm here for, I'm here for the bezel, and I'm here for the chapter ring. That weird, like olive to to very like kind of whitish gradient that's on the dial though. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really for me. It's not really for me. Give me a second. I need to pull. I need to pull the the tablet out so I I, I actually know what we're talking about. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Craig also mentioned he picked up uh, the limited edition Zodiac Super Sea Wolf uh, with the uh, with the Cosk movement inside of it um, that I'm going to Google as well while you're uh, while you're looking at the gradients that we're talking about on that Zodiac. Yeah, 
So I remember uh, they, uh, he contacted us from Paige and Cooper and then he gave us a heads up that it was coming out. And when I, when I saw the pictures that day, I definitely was also like, that's a lot of green. Um, mm -hmm. For someone who, who likes green, I mean, that's right down your alley. It, 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 that, that'll work for you. It, yes, yes, Paul. It literally is. It's green on green on green on green. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. I mean, that's why it's called, I think, the Kiwi, because it's literally green on green on green on green. Oh, you want more green? It's green. <laughs> yes, yes. Craig, that yellow and black bezel version from Toppers, um, that that reminds it reminds me of, of racing, um, like the, the race, uh, the checkered flag. Uh, but that definitely looks cool. Um, so, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. No, that's badass. So, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. So It's waiting for this to load up. It's got this dark green bezel, the light green chapter ring, um, the fume green. Um, I'm trying to think where else they kind of stuck green in there. Um, <laughs> it's got the it's got a darker, different shade of green for the minute hand. The loom is a light, light green. Um, yeah, it's a lot of green. I, it, 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 it's the kiwi. I mean, what, what can we what can we expect? <laughs> um, but no, I, I thought it was an interesting watch. I like, I think if you're going to do a collab, it, it's got to be just mm. like in your face. This is the design that I want. I, I think that kind of works. Um, nice looking watch. Definitely probably not for me either. Um, but yeah, what do you think? Would you have ever picked something like that up? No, I've I've looked at so many green watches um, and then realized that nothing in my wardrobe matches it that well. <laughs> so, like, I wouldn't have occasion. The, the only – I think the only green watch that I would ever buy, there's two. Um, any, like, like a cool-looking racing chronograph that has, like, like a British, British green. racing green. Yes. Right. I, so, I, so I like that color a lot. The other one, and I'll never get it because it's hard to find and the prices for it are stupid. Uh, is that limited edition uh, Zin 104 that they released that has like the 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 pool table green dial on it that they I think they only made like uh, an obscenely small number and it was priced a little higher uh, to begin with that thing looked really cool um, and I would definitely pick one of those up if the opportunity came along and I wasn't getting gouged in the eyes uh, as far as pricing went but those are literally like, the only two green watches that I've seen. That I like. That's the one. Yeah. Yep. That's a that, that's that, a cool looking watch. That that definitely is a, a cool looking watch. Um, it's weird. I I feel like I've kind of avoided the the big when you first come into watches kind of watches. I kind of avoided the Speedy. I've mm. avoided the the any Sin One Hundred Four, which I find shocking because I thought, like especially in some of the groups that I were that I was in, I thought there was no doubt I'd be picking up a One Hundred Four. Mm -hmm. But it's weird. I start looking at a watch. I find something about it that I'm just like, eh, I'm good. And I just keep it moving. It's weird how that works. Um, now, you and the Grand Seiko, which one are you looking at? I'm still not 100% sure, honestly. So I, I think I've at least moved away from the GMT. So here, here's what I've learned about at this point about myself. Um, I have learned that I'm just going to buy blue dial watches because <laughs> I wear a lot of blue tones. Um, I, I've talked before. I like being, uh, mat, mat, you know, conscious of, of matching that kind of stuff. Um, there was a time where I was buying too many blue watches and I was like, I need to stop buying blue watches. But then when I sat back and, and kind of took stock of things in my collection, I realized that my black dialed watches, even my black dial watches don't get worn all that often. So stop depriving myself. Just buy what I know I'm going to like. Um, so I, I think I moved away from the GMT because I already have two GMTs. Um, both fill the need in my collection perfectly. I don't travel that much. Uh, when I do travel, if I or if I need a GMT for some reason, I could use one of them. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm kind of I I really like the limited the the 60th anniversary line that they just put out. For Grand Seiko, um, I don't really want to spend 
BDB. That'll be yeah. That'll be the new name. BDB. That's gonna stick. Um, I don't really want to spend new prices for them though. Grand Seikos don't hold their value very well compared to some other brands. And you can get good deals on very good condition used ones um, buying privately. So I'm looking, I, I know for sure it's probably going to be time only. Um, it's going to be, well, actually there might be a date in there as well. I know I don't accept you if I, if I bought one without a date window. And plus they at least match them on the Grand Seiko. So it's not true. Um, so, but it's going to be time and date. Um, probably going to go with the, one of the 40 inch or 39 inch models. I was looking at the SBGX line that runs inch? 37. Huh? 40 inch? 40 millimeter. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I know you have a big wrist, but damn, Brad. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the SBGX lines are pretty ubiquitous, but they're only 37. I feel like that's going to be a little too small um, for my liking. So I still haven't decided on a specific reference or anything like that. Um, I can tell you, though, it's probably either going to be a blue dial or maybe a, uh, maybe a silver dial or like a gray dial. Grand Seiko, because I'd I'd like a I'd like a really nice gray dot watch in the collection, because I've kind of taken a shine to those, uh, as we've talked about before, here recently. So, you know, you're, you're mentioning Seiko, and you know what's um, what kind of grabbed my attention, um, these these latest reissues, um, the the modern, um, not the sixty two Moss. It's um, let me see. I think it's a 6105. Let me check. Mm -hmm. Yes, these new, this new green mm -hmm. um, 6105 reissue uh, that just looks amazing. Let me pull this up. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's this? I mean, Seiko, which is also interesting. They released it in. in now they're trying to say they released it when they weren't supposed to. <laughs> 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 like, <how laughs> they, they put it out last year, didn't they? Oh, my gosh. Like, how do you... I don't know. I don't know. Nature of time. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. The Se the Seiko Turtle case does not do it for me. No? No. It, it, and, and you know why? Um, I really like the, the case on the Notice Avalon. And and to me that just craps all over, like the regular Seiko, Seiko turtle case. Mm. Uh, and I'm before I go, I gotta step step out to the restroom. <laughs> I'm dying right now. Um, if anybody is interested in in picking up a Hamilton, um, I'm just gonna share with you guys real quick. Nordstrom Rack um, is having a huge sale on Hamiltons. Um, it started off as a much higher number, uh, but there's some more models. Um, give me a second, Brad, before I explode. <laughs> well, well, we should we should probably wrap it anyway because we we have a we have a hard limit of an hour on Instagram Live. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're wrapping up. But no, yeah, I've been um, I don't know. Like I said, there, there's been quite a few that have been coming across um on like Watch Exchange. So like I said, I'm just I'm looking for the right one at the time that I have. Uh, the the money available to me uh, to make that purchase, uh, but I I thought I was going to wait a little bit longer on the uh, on the Grand Seiko, but uh, it looks like it might happen a little bit sooner uh, than I thought, which is uh, which is really pleasing, and I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, like I said, Seiko Turtles never done it for me for some reason. It like for me like the the Seiko divers that I think are flying under the radar and don't get as much love as they deserve uh, are like the baby Marine masters, um, like the SBGPs mm -hmm. that they've been releasing. And I've talked about the, the, like the baby Marine master 200s on the podcast before. I think they deserve way more love than they get, but people are all about those turtle cases for some reason. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I can understand why um, it brings up a lot of nostalgia, but mm -hmm. I, I understand what you mean about the baby Marine masters. I don't know. I could warm up to them, but for now, yeah, these, these new 6105s really, really have grabbed my interest. Um, seems like they're going to be retailed between, I think, 11 and 14. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see how that goes down. 
because uh, that's 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 the store price. We'll see what the street price ends up being. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've kind of had. I, I'm still on the hunt for a hand wound watch. Still on the hunt. hunt. Um, right now, there's one that's kind of grabbed my attention. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. It, it, I'm still on the fence about it. Uh, it's from a brand called, and it seems like they this, these have actually been out for a little while. It's from a brand called Serica. Mm -hmm. um, and it's these cool kind of time only hand wound watches that they have. Mm -hmm. Trying to bring these up on the iPad. So like this. Okay. I like it. It's it's got kind of a it's got kind of like a vintagey thing to it, but all but it still kind of looks very much its own yeah. kind of style, which I can dig. Broad hour hands are always fun. Yeah. But the cool thing is you also have the option of of not doing the broad hour hands and just doing regular. Oh, I would get the broad hour 10 times out of 10 <laughs> on that watch. Yeah, we definitely defer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That that also, too, is something that, that I was kind of sad about. Um, and where is it? Where does it say it? Uh, case by Crown, Dial, Marcus Hands. Uh, where the Crown, Lug with. Yeah, I I definitely Skunk Works um, brings it up. I remember why I was kind of on the fence about them because they just have the mineral crystal. Um, it I, it doesn't bother me that much, honestly. Like like there, I, I know there's some people that get a little persnickety about that. The fact that you can pretty much repair it yourself if any like gets uh gets scuffed up or anything like that makes it not that big of a deal to me honestly like i i was honestly prefer sapphire especially you know if you're paying what is it 500 plus on this watch that it costs mm. yeah i think yeah it, it is what is retail on this i think it's 540 is what their site says yeah so i don't know mineral crystal it, it, it's a knock but it's not like a deal breaker for me yeah. personally and what's interesting is i'm looking at the hands those suckers are roughed up to bits. Like the hands, oh, yeah. the hands aren't like, I guess they were going for that, that, that weathered steel look on the hands. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the hands are definitely roughed up to bits. But it, I just, just something about the watch. I, I really do. There's something about it. I, I really do like it. It's one, it's, it's one of the few watches that has a straight hand wound movement in it. Uh, I think it's the SW210, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's not. It's actually an ETA. Inside 2804? Yeah, uh, 2801. 2801. So yeah. the no-date version. The 04 yes. is the date version. So the 01 is, yeah. No, it, it's a, it's a cool-looking watch. Um, and, and Skunk Works just let me know that it's, it's, on, it's on Watch Recon, which is... <laughs> which is one of the worst things for a guy who's in the market for a watch. <laughs> um, and, and it's from a reputable seller, too. You better watch out. I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, we're doing this live video. I, I could definitely see. Oh, wow. That's actually a pretty good. But I, I, I don't know if he does. I don't know if he doesn't know. He could just toss some poly watch on that and he'll be good. Dude, but to toss the poly watch on it yourself, baby. I know you got some lighter at home. If not, I'll send you some. I got that <laughs> for you, so. Uh, yeah. I have some. <laughs> okay, 20, uh, what size is this? Yeah, people are asking him questions. Okay. But, he, yeah, he's just looking for a sale. Um, posted it a little while ago. Um, so it reminds me a lot of that bulletin that you just had in, too. One of the, that, some of the field watches. That so. that boulevard, that boulevard was sweet. I, I can't even lie. <laughs> that boulevard was sweet. Uh, I I I had some initial one. I, 
when I found out what the thickness was, I had some initial apprehensions about it. Um, but it wears perfectly at its size, even with how thick it is. Um, mm -hmm. I think once you start getting to, to thick watches, I mean, you can't have them be so wide uh, because then the thickness really shows off. So like anything over 41 and like it's just it just doesn't look right. Um, but yeah, that that was actually a really good watch. Um, I, I'm still I still might just pick that one up for myself. But then I say that now and then I'll probably start looking and I'll be like, no, I'm not. <laughs> That's just literally how I am right now. Um, it, it, I'm just in a I'm not in the country. I just I know I want to buy a watch, but I have no clue what I want to buy. And well, then don't buy a watch. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, don't buy a watch. Um, I'll say the the one watch I'm looking forward to that's not that I know is coming soon. Um, I think next week actually. Uh, I'm probably not going to buy it, but I'm really curious to see what it looks like. Apparently, Chris Ward is doing a world timer, uh, in the C65 case, uh, yeah. which I think might look really dope. Nice. So we'll see. Hopefully, they actually put the right bezel on the watch and not just use the regular die bezel with a different insert. Chris Ward, maybe stop doing that. On your on your GMT and, <laughs> and world time watches, hit, hit. perhaps hit hit. Now, I, I I'm still waiting for that hand wound um, trident with a bracelet. Um, I forgot what it was. Uh, Ch -ch -ch Christopher Ward. It's probably the C65 you're talking about, but it's not a diver. It's just a regular regular. Um, oh, with the fixed bezel. Yes. Like I said, it's, just, it's a shame you don't like the diver because I'd have one just for you, buddy. <laughs> I, know, I know. I know. Oh, speaking of which, did you get the um? Did you get the uh, um, the box? I did. Okay. Yes. Good. 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 Yes. Yeah. Let me see. I'm trying to pull it up. They might not have it anymore because I tried to pull I it up on a, a couple. Sites. I don't think they do. Oh, there's Justin from Monto. What's up, Justin? Hey, we were, we were we were talking we were talking about you earlier. You're gonna have to go back and watch the entire thing. Yes, at yes. some point. And you know what? We'll start talking about you even more now. <laughs> Justin, I, I like that's one brand that I really want to buy. I just haven't found one of their watches yet that uh, I want to buy. Like, and the closest I got to was the Triumph. The Triumph is I want something like the Triumph, and we had this discussion. Where's the mm -hmm. Triumph, but give me like the, the um, not the Atlas, the the other, what is that other version? Um, basically the Triumph case, but with one of the other versions, with like um, the Ocean King dial. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Like if I got that, I literally would wear the Tudor and that all the time, <laughs> all the time, like. Like I, you would either see me in the Tudor Blackway or the Monta, all the time, because I think the Triumph is such a great case, and it, it's it's the perfect groundwork for like a everyday do anything go anywhere type of watch. Mm -hmm. You give me that Ocean King, like face. Oh, uh, uh, I mean, you 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 realize you realize that aside from the GMT feature, like the Atlas, the Ocean King. And the Sky Quest all have the same kind of like doll layout, right? Yeah, but it's just a Triumph. It's just it's, a Triumph. It, it's give me. But oh, the but the Atlas comes basically the Triumph case almost. No, but I don't want that. It's close. I don't want the Atlas. <laughs> I so want and 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 like to the point now. Like, I, okay, I'm gonna say this. Like, I I don't care if you have that 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 doll right now, Justin, and that case. <laughs> <laughs> and you could just yeah, take my buddy. Give, I'll give it to you. Just take it. I'll, I'll buy it today. You can send me the email. I'll buy it today. And the next time we have this, I'll literally be like, hey, look what I got. <laughs> I, I, I love the Triumph case so much. And I, I overall, I just I like a lot of the stuff that they do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is, this is, that's bad. But you know, I'm sticking to my word. If he could do that, I'm so I'm so like I literally like here take my money I don't care like like take it away. Um, but while we have them, I also want to say thank you so much, Justin, for the videos you've been doing, uh, keeping us watch guys sane during these 
crazy times where we just, I mean, content is few and far between, but it's cool to see the community just come together. Um, was digging that tux you had on the other day, man. That tux was smooth. <laughs> and I'm so happy that you actually had an actual bow tie. No clip-ons for you. The a actual bow tie. Because I've seen so many clip-on bow ties, it's, it's pissed me off. And I remember when I was um, looking for a tux for my wedding, and they gave me, like, the, the clip-on bow tie. And I was just like, get that out of here. <laughs> like, I was like, I have my <laughs> own at home. I learned... It's one of the last few things, like kind of, I don't even want to say masculine things because a lot of people wear bow ties right now, but it's one of the last few things from a, from a, 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 a older age. By, that, bygone era. From, like, from bygone yeah. era. <laughs> one tying your tie and, and an actual, tying an actual bow tie. Um, it's, 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 it's one of those things you just don't see. Often it's one of the cool, cool things, tying your tie, knowing your measurements. Um, like a lot of times I see guys walk into like a tuxedo store and they give them these baggy suits. And I'm just like, no, no, know your measurements. Don't let them put you in this, in this, this, this loose fitting suit. No. Nah. And it's just some, these are just some of the things that I just key on to. And I'm just like, it's so cool to see that. Um, even though I knew he, that was only the top half of the tux, <laughs> but still, it was a cool thing to see. No, so, man. uh, but yeah, but so I, like I said, we probably have to stop because unfortunately on Instagram, there's a hard 60 minute, uh, cutoff. Um, but yeah, yeah. thank you guys for, to for watching. We've been talking about doing the podcast live, um, for a while here. Maybe, I, I mean, like I said, we'll probably do this more often at least, mm -hmm. um, We'll see what happens. Uh, weirdly enough, you're going to get better video quality out of this than when we do it on the computer because we have better webcams and <laughs> tablets than we do it's crazy. on our PCs, which is insane to me, but that's just kind of how it goes. It's crazy. Like I, I, And I actually like this setup a little bit better. I just have to kind of work on my background. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I, this will, so I have my wife's... Um, picture when she was younger and I have our son's handprint and my picture when I was younger um and... Skunk Wars asks can you put it on YouTube later as long as Ricardo remembers to hit save uh save it to his device once, yes. the, once the stream is done yes he yes put it on we, YouTube could later, so. we could definitely do that so what I'm and and, and and on podcast services around the globe as well so <laughs> So uh, some quick interior designing. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to leave the, the boulevard up here. Um, when I'm recording, I'll probably take this down and I'll, I'll probably end up putting this. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'll probably end up putting this too. Um, sorry, you guys are going to have to deal with James Bond pop figures behind me now <laughs> and forever. So that's, that's just going to be something that happens. Um, but yeah, so like I said, if you're not, uh, if you're not following us on watch with us, which if you're watching live, I don't see how you couldn't be, mm -hmm. uh, make sure you do that, but also make sure you follow, uh, ready, set, watch and budding watch enthusiast and bearded time on Instagram. Um, uh, if you're watching later on YouTube, subscribe here to the channel, uh, head over to the budding watch enthusiast channel, subscribe there as well. I hope to get on a regular schedule here at some point. It's been really difficult. Um, just because I'm enjoying spending time with the family every night and <laughs> on weekends now, so I haven't. I'm still in the afterglow of that, switching to an eight to five. Um, and and again, if you're listening on podcast services later, uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, we're on whatever app you use to get your podcasts. 